Hi, I'm Ryan Leach with Master the Score, and this is a lesson from my new course with Gavin Leeper, The Legend of Otoe, Composing Music for Anime and JRPGs, Levels 2 and 3. If you want more content on getting better at making music, make sure you like the video and subscribe to Master the Score. Enjoy! Our last video focused on all the different ways we can vary up the classic Royal Road progression. Now that we know more about borrowed chords, there are three more common chord progressions I'd like to cover. The Mario Cadence. If you only remember one of these three progressions, I recommend you choose this one. It's been named the Mario Cadence because it most famously features in the level clear fanfare for Super Mario Brothers. The Mario Cadence provides punctuation to a chord progression like any other cadence, but does so in a more interesting way than we've covered thus far. It arrives to the one chord using the flat six and flat seven from the parallel minor key. So for C major, that looks like. The bit of darkness afforded by the borrowed chords helps us to arrive at that one chord with more tension and drama. Will our hero beat the bad guy? I don't know, he's pretty bad. Ah, looks like he won. You may notice that this is very related to the seal progression we covered earlier. Four, five, six especially the variant where we land on a major version of the VI chord. In fact, in terms of spacing and chord qualities, they are identical. Essentially, the primary difference between the two is the context in the overall chord progression. A related progression I'll share with you here is the backdoor 2-5. We borrow F minor and B flat dominant from C minor but instead of resolving to E flat, like we would expect, we go up to C. This is only one chord different from the Mario cadence. We're using functional substitution to substitute the flat six chord, which is a subdominant chord, with the four minor chord, which is another subdominant chord, the Evangelion progression. The second progression I'd like to cover is actually a bit similar to the Nichijou progression we covered in level one. Remember, from level one, the Nichijou progression goes one, two of six, five of six, six, two of four, five of four, four, three, two, five, one. Put more succinctly, we play the one chord, tonicize the six chord, tonicize the four chord, then tie the progression off with the two five cadential progression. What I want to cover next is another two five chain progression, and I call it the Evangelion progression because it most famously occurs in the opening for the show, Neon Genesis Evangelion. In order to understand this progression, we'll first need to understand an important way of extending two five progressions that American jazz musicians pioneered in the bebop days. Let's look at the circle of fifths and think about it in terms of diatonic chords in C. If we start labeling it with chords according to their Roman numerals, we first see how two moves to five moves to one. Now, what if we wanted to arrive to two in the same way, but wanted to use a diatonic C chord? A minor, the sixth chord, is a fifth above D minor, the two chord. When jazz musicians notice this, they realize that any two five progression can be extended to a six two five one progression. We can keep following that logic to yield the much rarer 3, 6, 2, 5, 1 progression, and rarer still, 7, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. Hopefully you get the picture by now. Clockwise movement on the circle of fifths delivers a consistent result. The Evangelion progression starts on 4, uses a 3, 6, 2, 5, and finally uses a secondary 2, 5 to get back to 4. In that moment where we hit the G minor, that's the secondary 2-5. Two, 2 of 4, 5 of 4, 4. The rest of this is all diatonic, right? The Loon progression. This last progression isn't necessarily a popular one, but I think it's a good one to have in your pocket especially if you're going for a certain type of classical sound. It's also in a song from Genshin Impact's Fontaine area called Rondeau des Fleurs des Rapiers. 
The progression is for minor keys and goes like this. Notice how we've used some inversions and secondary dominant chords to give the bass line a nice chromatic shape. This concludes our harmony section of level 2. For our next lecture, I'll hand it over to Ryan for an interesting concept about melodies.